So this is a video I started last year in the summer and it's taken me up to now to come close to finishing it. I found a bagged HPLV, that is high pressure low volume extractor in a skip and decided to take it and check if it was working, which it was, and then to convert it into the closed bin variety. I was going to do this by housing the motor on top of large 400mm air ducting that I also found. I cut the extractor up removing the cage and hanging arm to make it more manageable. I neither had the space to hang it as it was but also the cage was damaged and kept ripping the bags when I did try to use it. I then marked the remaining sections with a marker pen and formed a line using some masking tape which I cut off camera again using the angle grinder. In the background you can hear the CNC going off. I decided to use several rings to create the sections which would hold the pieces together and I cut these out using offcuts which I had laying around. If you click on the information card which will appear momentarily you'll find a CNC playlist of videos in which I rebuilt this machine as well as a sister channel which focuses primarily on that technology. Later in the video I will use the CNC machine again to cut another part and you'll see the difference to the machine. It would have been more accurate at the time of cutting the rings had I done this with a router or even a jigsaw. You can avoid rebating for example by cutting the rings in various thicknesses and gluing them on top of each other. Once I had the rings I went about dry fitting them and then grinding down any high points on the metal that I'd previously cut. I did this by scribing uh, lines within the open drums using the caliper against a flat base and checking how the rings sat. When I was happy with how these fitted together I began gluing them with contact adhesive. I really did hodgepodge this together using bits of ply and MDF. Some pieces didn't cut as round as I'd like because I hadn't calibrated the machine properly at the time but also there are visible signs of wandering router bits. In any case I stubbornly persisted I also raised the extractor ventilation gap using a scrap piece of ply to space everything evenly. Afterwards I applied hot glue to the join sealing any gaps. If I decide to paint the finished extractor these will look like heavy welds and not some craft material. I finished the remaining pieces and out of curiosity I checked if the suction of the extraction could lift the drum. I guess that's a good sign. The next stage is to make a template using the offcuts from the rings with which to cut the saw pipe. The top and bottom pieces should mirror each other and the inside measurement should all be equal, creating a snug fit for the pipe. When it came to cutting this I really did struggle and this would have been much easier on a bandsaw. I guess it's fair to say it's probably time I tried to build one, so this is on the cards now. I fired some notches into the pipe for the raised seams along the drum and traced where I was planning to position it. I then drilled holes within the shape and finished cutting with an angle grinder. If I had a die grinder I could have cleaned it up a little more but this will have to do. 
I glued the soil pipe and later the HEPA filter, again using contact adhesive and hot glue. I'm wearing gloves when handling the filter because it is made from fiberglass and can irritate your hands. So I made an adapter ring on the CNC machine for the hose. Please note the difference in appearance of this machine from the one I used at the beginning of the video. An alternative to making this as I did would be to cut thin layers of MDF and gluing the discs together thus creating the rebate. The hose is simply pushed inside for now. I was aware that bag lift is a problem with HPLV extractors and added these pressure fittings onto the drum connected with a hose. This is meant to level the pressure between the two parts of the bag, although the hose is quite narrow. Anyway, now for a test. So I had a problem with the uh, bag being sucked up into the filter despite having linked the bottom and top of the drum with a hose, that is the inside and outside of the bag. I probably have to increase the diameter of that hose and I could also add um, a pressure valve somewhere, um, but I think these are things for another video. Um, if you know a little about preventing bag lift in extraction units, if you know a little about reducing bag lift, please leave a comment below with what you might do, as well as how I should paint the extractor. I'm in several minds as to finishing it with a bold, strong colour, or to decorate it like a Dalek or droid perhaps. So let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.